I got interested in homeopathy a long time ago when I was still a medical student. In fact, I initially got interested in, in traditional Chinese medicine a very long time ago. <laughs> Embarrassed to tell you exactly how long ago. Um, I went to China. It was still the tail end of the Cultural Revolution. Mao Zedong was still alive, so that gives you a clue. Uh, um, and we went to a, the, the uh, operating theater of a small Chinese provincial town, and there was a woman lying on the operating table entire abdomen open, conscious, talking to the anaesthetist with three needles in her left ear. And I thought, that doesn't happen. They didn't teach us that at Cambridge. Uh, and for a while, I seriously intended to study uh, traditional Chinese medicine. Then I became aware of homeopathy through being ill myself and being helped by homeopathy and decided homeopathy is much more accessible uh, in the sense that you, you, you need to completely change your, your whole way of thinking to do Chinese medicine. With homeopathy, there's always been a dialogue. With Western medicine, often a dialogue of the deaf, with both sides shouting and neither listening, but there has been some kind of a dialogue. So it's much easier to get into it. And then, but then to progress, if you want to be a doctor doing homeopathy, uh, the career pathways are, to put it, mildly limited. And so what I did, in fact, was to do a research post at Bart's Hospital with a man called Professor Paul Turner, very good guy, no longer with us, unfortunately. Um, so I did a research fellowship and at the same time got my higher medical training, then went back to the what was then the Royal London Homeopathic Hospital uh, and all the time I've had a, a foot in, in both camps.